Peace. Welcome to Faith Expressions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this video, I would like to share my story of my vocation that God has given me. So, with this video, and the third part, the years in the priesthood, I am doing this video for two reasons among many. First and foremost, to celebrate my 24th year in the priesthood. I celebrated August 4th of this year. And I am journeying to celebrate my silver jubilee, my 25th. May God give me the grace to be able to arrive at that year uh, for next year and then the years ahead. Another idea, reason why I would like to make this video is for vocation campaign. I hope that there would be some single men, single women, who would consider dedicating their life, consecrating their, their life for the service of God in His church, be it in the priesthood or in the religious life. So now we are on our third part of the sharing about my vocation to the priesthood and the priestly years, the priestly life. I was ordained August 4th, 1996. So, uh, so in this third part, um, I have these several points. The first one I would like to share about my priestly life. Early on, I was told by my spiritual director I was already ordained deacon and I have to go home to the Philippines for my priestly ordination. And he told me, when you become a priest, do not forget this. Be generous in sowing the seeds, the seeds of the Word of God, the sacraments, to be with people. Somebody ask you for confession. Somebody ask you to talk to. Somebody ask you about something. Give something and especially also prayer. Pray for people. That's how you can be generous in sowing the seeds of divine life. But then he said also, also take note of this. Always be joyful and be cheerful in your, in your priestly life because there are 10% who will love you no matter what and 10% who will hate you or have always something negative against you, even if you are doing fine, it's okay. And then there are 80% who wouldn't even care who you are and what you are. That is the mission. And it stuck in my head because along the years of my priesthood, 24 years now, it is really true. Uh, people there are a lot of people who will really support, who are really supportive of me, who are really loving and who would be, are, are very encouraging in my priesthood. There are some would be a challenge, but thanks be to God. Uh, thanks be to God, I have not experienced in my 24 years those who are violent really to the extent as if you are being persecuted. Um, I have uh, experienced, encountered some persons who would be uh, giving odd, uh, hurtful comments. But I would just say thank you uh, and leave it to God. Because I always learn this saying from a spiritual director. Be joyful and cheerful, always. And so it's okay. The 80% is the mission. And that is why it's good. Uh, keep on uh, journeying, keep on doing things, uh, trying to celebrate Mass well, trying to celebrate the sacraments well. This advice from a spiritual rector early on was really true. And, and what have I done with it? I just remember it. And it just gives me peace of mind and heart. And thanks be to God. God has given me not only 10%, those who love me, those who are supportive of me, those who are uh, 
very encouraging um, in my priesthood. And maybe actually in the, the years of my priesthood, it's actually 99% who are loving and supportive of me. The second thing I would like uh, to share is this question. What are you most joyful of in your priesthood? Um, I have been asked about this. What, what is my joy? What do I enjoy the most in my priesthood? Um, I cannot pinpoint of only one. I am joyful in the celebrations of the sacraments in general. But yes, I am happy when I celebrate Mass. Um, the joy in celebrating the anointing of the sick. Um, but mostly, I would say a deep joy I find in confessions. So I enjoy um, the, the celebration of the mercy of God in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. And I, I admire the people who, who go to the confession already with a mindset. They already prepared. I could I could really say in the years of my former, in the years of my priesthood, it is where I find that special joy during the time of the celebration of the mercy of God in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. There is a different kind of joy in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. There is a different kind of joy, I tell you, in the celebration during consecration. Sometimes I would find uh, I would experience a kind of joy during preaching um, sometimes my, my my hands would even tremble people after for example mass uh, would say thank you father for for this or that or for for a good homily for that I am grateful of those who give the affirmation but I am worried when people uh, give that comment or say those things but i hope it will not just be about enjoying it but trying to really put the heart and the mind on what they have learned or or what they have taken out of it in order that their lives also can be better before god that is my concern and so uh, what would be my joy in the priesthood, I believe, in the celebration of the sacraments. And especially there's a special joy in the celebration of the mercy of God. And I would like uh, to also mention, I am uh, also enjoying the, the community life. Uh, people in the parish, in the 24 years of my priesthood, 10 years of that in the academic life, um, I was still in Rome uh, doing my doctorate and then I went to the, back to the Philippines. I was in the seminary, a uh, spiritual rector in the seminary, then I became a rector in the seminary and then I was a priest, uh, one of the priests in, in campus ministry in the University of the Philippines in Los Banos. And then I came to the U.S. Uh, only it is here in the United States that I was in the Paris life the 14 years Paris life there is there is a different kind of joy in community life and what can I say in in finding joy in these things I would like to say that the joy that is coming from the Lord cannot be experienced in one setting and that is why I go back to the first uh, experience or the first point when my spiritual director just said, you have to be joyful and cheerful. I believe I have also to choose and to decide and to will to be joyful because it is in willing to be joyful that the Lord's joy can have a ground in my heart, in my life, in my priestly life. Remember, Jesus said, I give you my joy so that your joy might be complete. So I have to have that joy first, my own joy, so that with what I am joyful of, with what I am cheerful of in my priestly life, there the joy of the Lord can also have a ground in order 
that the whole of my priestly life, there is that sense of joy and cheerfulness and fulfillment uh, in, in the priesthood, in what I do. Uh, so the third question that the, that the people used to ask is, what are the struggles that I have encountered or what was that which I struggled the most? I cannot answer uh, this question in one spot or in one, with one reason or with one answer. First and foremost, I want to say that like all other priests and like all other human beings, I have a share in the uh, temptations like anybody else. I have a share in the difficulties as well with prayer life. Sometimes I'm lazy. Uh, temptations, a lot of temptations. Temptations of the flesh. Temptations of thoughts also of, you know, of pride when our ego when my pride is hurt. Uh, sometimes the challenge would be, yes, relational. relational. When I sense animosity, there, there's it affects me. It affects me because I do not know right away how to navigate in order to be sensitive. Uh, why I say so that this is a struggle? Because um, sometimes, especially even when I am not involved, the atmosphere, the atmosphere changes. Um, and so when the atmosphere changes, the, the things to be done um, many times suffer, becomes compromised. So when there is the environment is not conducive for truly fostering a good pastoral uh, work or in the sacraments, uh, precisely, the Lord Jesus said, if you knew a, a brother or a sister who have something against you and you are offering the gift, uh, leave the gift first on the altar and go and reconcile. Um, in my own journey as a priest, as a priest, finding the good atmosphere, the good uh, vibes, I am not in competition with anybody. I remember, and this has stuck in my head, um, the rector in my college years, Father Oscar Lorenzo, told us, we are not working for honors. Our priesthood is not for honors. Do not work for rewards. Because if you would like the rewards now, Jesus even said, you already have your reward. If you want the reward now, what will happen in your next life? You don't have the reward anymore because you want it now. So it stuck to me, the temptation about finances, about money. When I was still, especially a young priest, and not actually my fault directly, but because of my friends, I was in Europe. And so I was given other things, signature items. So much so that when I went home and my mother and my sister were trying to take out my clothes and arrange them. Uh, uh, and my mother was seeing, uh, seeing signature items, etc. And, and my mother said, this is not priestly. This is not priestly. It was a temptation. To, to look for money and then buy good clothes and good shoes and and then practically after some time no more this also I have learned now in this point about troubles struggles God's grace is abundant God's grace is abundant and more so I have learned that the mercy of God is always there. The merciful love of God is the one that is triumphant in all of my struggles. Out, I believe, always being reminded of Peter after having denied the Lord three times in the gospel, it is said that 
the eyes of Peter and the Lord met. There was a glance of the Lord. After the last denial of Peter, the Lord had a glance on Peter and the cock crowed. I remember this. And it gives me it gives me peace of how the merciful love of God is powerful. And in whatever troubles, temptations, uh, struggles, that Jesus has is always there. And he gives a glance. And it is just like saying, Go on. I told you. So uh, it is there and I am happy uh, for whatever came and whatever is to come. Or the other point I would like also to share is about fidelity, about faithfulness. Already 24 years in the priesthood, I could say I never have lost the admiration about faithfulness. Fidelity is precious. Fidelity has been shown to me first in the strict sense that it is faithful when, when we can just obey day in and day out and persevere with it. When I can just accept what is being given and live with it. And that's for me fidelity. That's my the strict sense. Um, this is my life, life of a priest. There is celibacy, there is obedience, there is the calling for poverty of spirit. And so, if I can truly pursue in this, that's fidelity. And there are priests who are who have that gift, the strict sense. Of fidelity. Meanwhile, also I have learned another sense of fidelity. It is fidelity it, along the way there could be some failures. You stumble, you fall, you are bruised, you crawl and like Jesus who was carrying the cross, he stumbled, he has fallen, but then he rose up again. And in the end, he brought the cross up to Calvary. And then he died. The mission is complete. For me, that's also fidelity. There could be many failures. There could have been many bruises and scars. But so long as I will bring what I am called to do to the end, that is also fidelity. And that is what I have learned in the priesthood. And that is why I am inspired all the more to just persevere, to just walk on the way, day in and day out. The priesthood in me is not about me. The face of the priesthood in me is not the Father Jope, but it is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. There are bruises in my face or in my body in as much as maybe the Lord also has the scars of the scourgings and the nail marks. And I believe that is also what priesthood is about. To showcase the priesthood of Jesus. No matter what happens, you are there day in and day out walking towards the goal the end of the mission, to bring to fulfillment the mission. And that's for me, fidelity. I share this because uh, in the priesthood, many times people give up on the priesthood. Many times brother priests give up on the priesthood. Uh, some challenge or troubles arrive in their life and they they just succumbed. They gave up on it and they, they go out of the priesthood. You may have lost the taste and the joy of the priesthood. Do not go out of the priesthood. 
I would like to mention it here in in this in my sharing because in our time nowadays there are many scandals. In our time nowadays, people are trying to find inspiration in the church. I believe um, they might be disappointed, but if they would want to see where the inspiration is, they have to look on Jesus crucified. They have to look on Jesus on the cross that is always at the center of the church. They have to look on the Jesus crucified in the priests. Um, I am always told early on, as a priest, I have been called uh, with my own uh, troubles and my own weaknesses. When I was ordained, I was not transformed into becoming a superman with a perfect behavior and a perfect mindset. Day in and day out, I have to learn. I have to strive to become the better person. I believe it is really true of what Saint Mother Teresa said. We are called not to be successful, but to be faithful. So I would like to leave it there. The last thing I would like uh, to share is this. How did I deal with successes and failures? How did I deal with temptations and victories? How did I deal with hardships and consolations? My answer to that is gratefulness to the presence of God. Gratefulness to the presence of Jesus Christ in the priesthood. Gratefulness for the assurance that Jesus said in the world you will have troubles, but don't worry, I have conquered the world. So I, I hang on into those words. And also I like these words also from Prophet Sirach. My son, if you would like to serve the Lord, prepare for troubles. So I like always to, to mention it. And uh, There are troubles, thanks be to God. And then you work hard, you try to behave well, you try to do this and to do that. And still, I feel that I am being put down. Sometimes I have that, but as I've said, I am grateful. I am grateful that the Lord is allowing me to share that kind of, of you know, of, of experience. Because I know for a fact that when there are sacrifices, sufferings, pains that come, God is preparing something, a greater grace to be given. And sooner or later, indeed, it comes. Just the gratefulness of being a priest, of having been called as a priest, and just that. And that's how I cope up. I, that, that's how I cope up with, with troubles and consolations, temptations and victories. Um, in all of that, there is the gratefulness. I just would like to say that. Because it is easy when there are victories, when there are encouragements, when there are consolations, but during those negative times, during those hard times, God is always there, and I am grateful. And so, in these years of my priesthood, three things I would like to share to conclude. First, I would like that my priesthood, I would like that this be remembered. You know, God's hands sometimes are heavy. The hands of the Lord sometimes are heavy. But, but God's consolations are never lacking. I, 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 I would like to say it in Waray Waray. Ang kamuthan Dios mabugat danay. Pero maara magsaho. Mas mamaupay pangani iton Danay na abat hit kamabug at hiton kamut hit ginoo. Pero dere nawawara it pagsaho hit Dios. I am saying that uh, the consolations in spite of 
of maybe disciplining or chastisements from the Lord, the hands of the Lord can be heavy, but His consolations are never lacking. Another thing I would like uh, to remember in my priesthood is this uh, statement. We are to believe in God in the way He wants to be believed, not in the way I want to believe. I have to love God in the way he wants to be loved, not in the way I want to love. I want to serve God in the way he wants to be served, not in the way I want to serve. There is always a difference. And many times I would like to underline that there are a lot also of us in our Christian journey that we think it that way. Well, I want to believe in God in the way I want to believe. Faith is a gift. And so you respond to it. Faith is a revelation. You respond to the revelation. And how do you respond? You do not respond by changing what is revealed to suit uh, one's own way of thinking and of doing. Uh, no. You respond in the way it is asked of you. Or the revelation asks from you. Uh, so it is not about the me. It is always about God. And the priesthood is like that. Um, and that is why it is important that there is always obedience. And along the, the course of, of my priesthood, I tried to obey, uh, always to refer to the bishop. I live my priesthood in the way God wants me to live the priesthood not in the way I want to live it. I would like to live my life with the love that God wants me to love Him, with the service that God wants me to serve Him, in His way, not my way. The third thing I would like also to, to share in the priestly life, I admire and I'm grateful of the example of fellow priests especially the older priests, the big brothers, so to say, in the priesthood. In my journey now as a priest, now a priest of 24 years, practically the priesthood is the same. Um, the struggles are the same. Maybe the kind of disposition of the heart was different. And that is why I believe I admire of those priests who have shown me the disposition of the heart, their own heart, whether they shared it orally to me or not, but I was able to observe the kind of disposition they have in their heart in living their priesthood. And that was admirable. And this I am sharing because it helped me in my priesthood. How? The older priests, some of them have, have this disposition of the heart. And also of the uh, lay people, uh, lay people with a good disposition in relation to the church, a good disposition in relation to priests. They know how the priestly life is and they can sympathize how the difficulty uh, life of a priest is, how the life in the church is, and they are there to, to just be an encouragement. I like that. The quality of the heart in how they also see the priests and they are very encouraging to the priests. And so, in conclusion of all of this, my patron saint, when I was ordained, is St. John Marie Vianney. My wish and prayer is that St. John Marie Vianney uh, may continue to, to intercede for me in my priesthood. And the last but not the least, the Blessed Mother Mary in her Immaculate Heart. My mother told me to consecrate myself to the Immaculate Heart, to the Blessed Mother Mary. May the Blessed Mother Mary always intercede for me and inspire me 
in my ordination, I have the, the little prayer, the little prayer saying, Lord, I offer to you all that you have bestowed upon me, even my sins and weaknesses, which are properly my own. I beg you only one thing, make me your own. Holy Mary, my lady and mother, be with me always. Amen. And the word of life of my priesthood in my ordination was coming from Psalm 27, verse 4, which says, One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I, I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I end my sharing, and I hope this would be of help to those who are uh, searching vocation in their life. And to those, all of you, please pray for priests all over the world. Pray for vocations to the priesthood. And please pray for me. God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. And please subscribe if you have not done so. And share this video to others. God bless.